Maybe on this side, because I have the camera there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Madhyana Pira Mirasya Janam Jana Shalakaya Chakshundi Tham Nina Tashm Shri Gurave Madhyana Pira Mirasya Janam Jana Shalakaya Chakshundi Tham Nina Asmai Shri Gurave Oh, uh-huh. 
Jai Krishna Skavar Gosamaraji, Jai Vasavata Shivri and Damandasta Kumashi, Jai Shri Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Jai Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Jai Gopal Jai Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Gopal Jai Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Gopal Jai Gopal Pasadasa, Jai Gopal Jai 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 Gauri Vaishnavetin Ham Ki Jai Jai Bhakti Vigdami Nashana Kari Shin Shin Re Bhagavan Ki Jai Jai Bhakta Bravara 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 Ki Jai Jai Nanta Gauti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Guvana Mangalhar Naam Sankirtan Ki Jai Jai Gundicha Marjana Lila Ki Jai Jai Nanta Gauti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Jai Gauri Kirtan Ki Jai With us on Bajan or, or straight? Yeah. Yeah. 
Hmm. Maybe at the end we can do some a little bit. Yeah. Om Jnanati Nirandasya Jnanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshudan Militam Jena Tashmi Shri Gudai Namaha Nama Shrishtam Manumapi Satchiputram Matra Shadupam Rupam Tasha Grajam Rupurim Mathurim Gustavatim Radha Kundam Giribaram Maho Radhikamadhavasam Rapto Yasha Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tamnatusme Vancha Kalpataru Bhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayvacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Nikhila Shroti Mole Ratnamala Deity Nirajita Padapanka Janta Aji Mukta Kulai Rupashamanam Paditastam Harinam Samshayami Nare Pitacharim Chira Kadunaya Vaturna Kaluho Samar Paitum Natoch Balarasam Sabhakti Shriam Hari Purata Sundara Duty Kadamba Sandi Pitaha Sadari Dai Kandhades Purato was Sachinandana Ajan Lambita Bujo Anaka Vadato Sankirtanai Kapitaru Vamalaya Takshu Vishwambaro Dvijaburo Jugadhar Mapalo Ande Jagat Priyakaro Karuna Vataru Dhadini Shakti Sarupaya Gauranga Suridayacha Bhakta Shakti Pradhanaya Gadadharana Mashtute He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gupika Kanta Radha Kanta Namashtute Radhe Vrindavanadishe Karunam Vritavahine Kripaya Nijapadabja Dasyan Mahyam Pradiyatam Bhaktya Bihina Aparadha Lakshay Kshipta Shakamaditarangamadhe Kripa Maitam Sharanam Prapanam Brinde Maste Charanada Vindam Brinde Maste Charanada Vindam Srila Gurudev Ki Jai Shuman Mahaprabhu Ki Jai Sri Sri Sadhguj Oranga Ki Jai Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Sri Gundicha Marjan Leela Ki Jai <coughs> Gold Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gold Primanan, Hari Hari Go. Mm, so, pranam to all of you, thanks so much for coming and good evening, welcome. Thank you so much, Regupat Sarabrahi for hosting us, Sadhguj Mahaprabhu for hosting Regupat and Sarabrahi, <laughs> <laughs> and all of us by extension. <clears throat> so, today we are celebrating Gundicha Marjan Lila. We are entering into the fold of Sri Jagannath, if you will, and all a series of celebrations connected to this unique deity of Krishna that we find mostly in Jagannath Puri. Tomorrow we are celebrating Ratha Yatra or the festival of the chariots. And one day before Ratha Yatra, always we are celebrating Gundicha Marjan Lila, which means the pastime of the cleansing of the Gundicha temple. Mm -hmm. So this is one of these few uh, festivals or pastimes that are included in our calendar. I don't know, maybe probably because, of course, you always know which day was the festival because it's one day before Rathiyatra. Because there are so many other lilas that Mahaprabhu performed with his associate that are not necessarily 
part of the calendar, not because they are not important, but maybe probably because just it is not known which was the day on which they were performed. In connection with the Gundicha margin, you always know it's one day before a theater. <laughs> so there's no opportunity for failure there. So this is a very interesting lila. Lots of, uh, how to say, interpretive breathing to be performed in, in this connection. Lots of symbology that we are to draw from what's taking place in the in the outside of the lila, if you will. I mean, there's in one sense no outside of the lila, but at the same time, there are many layers of meaning, of purpose. Uh, every time Bhagavan, Krishna, Mahaprabhu, his associate art, are doing anything, <laughs> uh, we should know for sure there are simultaneous, multi-dimensional levels of purpose at the same time. That's it. The nature of God. You know, he can accomplish many things at the same time by doing one single thing. Apparently, one single thing that so many things have been accomplished in so many directions. So, as we will continue speaking also tomorrow, Gundicha is one temple that for those who have been able to visit Jagannath Puri is on one side of the main road, Grand Road, as it is called sometimes in Jagannath Puri. So, in the beginning of that main road, you have Sri Mandir or the temple where Sri Jagannath resides, and on the other extreme, you have Gundicha Mandir. And Grath Yatra basically means the chariots, the three chariots, Jagannath, Valadit, Subhadra, moving from Rathya, from Sri Mandir to Gundicha Mandir. That's some, um, how much, maybe four kilometers, how much distance. It takes some time walking. And it takes more time in Rath Yatra because sometimes Jagannath wants to move, sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> A different other, of course, consideration. So, the general idea of the Gundicha Marjan Lila, just for you to have keep that in mind, and then we will go into the details of the of this particular episode. And it's it's tied with the meaning of Rathiatra. The whole idea of Rathiatra is like going to Vrindavan, if you will. We are in Puri, but actually we are going to Vrindavan. That's the goal of the Gaudiya Sampradaya to enter Vrindavan. And to enter Vrindavan, as it will be clear, hopefully by this Gundicha Lila, go to Vrindavan means to make our hearts Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. This is not just, I got my ticket and I am Vrindavan or something like that. Mm -hmm. Even if you arrive there physically, you have to ask where am I mentally, internally, and then you will know where you are, basically. Mm -hmm. Like when Srila Rupa Goswami says, Matura Vas. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you should reside physically in Vrindavan. And and Rupanji Goswami say, well, if that's not possible, at least you should reside there mentally. Like implying, if you are physically there, needless to say, the idea is that you were there mentally as well. If you cannot be there physically, okay, try to be mentally. But whether you are there physically or not, ideally mentally you have to be there. Internally you have to recreate the atmosphere, the environment, the mood of the dham, of the sacred abode. So this... Gundicha Marjan Lila, as we will see. Rathiatra means the, the, the chariots are going from Kurukshetra or from Dwarka, depending how you like to conceive Puri. We will speak about that tomorrow. But going to Vrindavan. You can see Jagannan Mandir as Kurukshetra, you can see Jagannan Mandir as Dwarka, but Gundicha is Vrindavan, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so the converging point of the journey is Vrindavan. Uh, but of course, for for Jagannath to go to Vrindavan, for Krishna to enter Vrindavan and reside there. And we, be, for, for us to be there, we have to make our hearts Vrindavan. So this Gundicha Marjan Lila speaks a lot about these uh, preliminary actions to prepare the ground, the foundation for that to happen, for us to celebrate Rathiatra in the most substantial way, in a way that actually Jagannath feels tempted to enter into our hearts. Because again, externally we are pulling the carts, externally the chariot are moving to a particular place. But all of these external dynamics should be understand as should take place internally as well. Some in some way, as the car is moving, something should be moving inside my heart. <laughs> if my heart is not being moved, 
I have maybe I moved the car from one extreme to the other, but if nothing is being moved here, it was not so much purpose in the external moving, if you will. So the idea is clean your hearts, prepare your heart for the descent of divine love that will make Vrindavan, will, will make your consciousness Vrindavan. Basically, this is the symbology of Gundicha Marjan. The Gundicha means again the temple that represents Vrindavan. And we will see in today's Lila how Mahaprabhu and his associates are totally dedicated to cleaning the temple. This doesn't mean that Vrindavan in itself needs to be cleaned, cleansed. In an external level, it needs a lot. <laughs> but in, in an internal sense, Vrindavan is the, the cleansing place for excellence. But the point is, you need to cleanse your, clean your heart so it becomes Vrindavan. So it reflects hmm, this divine prem that Vrindavan is. And the only place in which Krishna resides is there, basically, for us Gaudias. No? That's his, as my Guru Maharaj likes to say, in that heart where there is divine love, in that heart you will find Krishna more present than anywhere else. Hmm? Krishna is most present next to prem. Hmm? So, so some words about, let's share some words about this temp, the cleaning of the Gundicha temple. To begin with, the name Gundicha is basically the name of the wife of Indra Dyupna Maharaj, to whom this deity of Jagannath revealed in ancient times. And interestingly to say that this is the first place, actually the original place where Jagannath appeared to Indra Dyupna Maharaj. So interestingly, Jagannath originally appeared not where he is now, but in a place that represents Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. so, so that's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. Saragrah is confirming given the authority, authoritative <laughs> background. <laughs> her, full, her notebook is supporting my statements. Yeah. So what we will see among many other things in, in this particular Lila is Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Dev. We already know that Sri Chaitanya, the sannyasi in particular, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he's uh, Acharya. He's Krishna, he's Acharya Lila. So Acharya means he who is teaching by example. Also a precept, but he's walking the talk so much that sometimes he doesn't need to say almost anything <laughs> because his example speaks so much louder than precept. So in this particular Lila, of course, many others, but this is one of those in which you will see Mahaprabhu as the Acharya for excellence, like he himself showing what to do and teaching others and giving the example to others about how to conduct in the particular task. So he will ask his followers, okay, let's cling on Dicha, but he will cling on Dicha better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's not that, okay, let's cling on Dicha, I'll go to have some some ice cream or something in the Grand Road. I, mean, I don't think there was ice cream at that time, but some burfi or some sweet, whatever. <laughs> and and you you clean the whole thing and let me know when you're finished. No, no, no. He was the main one leading the the cleaning procession, if you will. No? So as my Gumraj likes to say, no, if if you are being an acharya, means that you are ready to do those things that you are requesting others to do. Now, for some reason, you may be doing needing to do something. And you may need to ask, Brigupat, please, can you help me with this? Because I have to do this. But if Brigupat says no, he won't say that, but let's go to them. <laughs> For some exceptional reasons, he may not be able to say, no, I cannot do that. So the person who requested him to do that should be willing to do that oneself. It's not that I'm asking you to do something that I'm not willing to do. So that that's that that's part of the integrity of the of the chariot, basically. Also. So, so again, this is the preparation, the one day before Ratha Yatra. In the context in which this is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita, which, if I'm not mistaken, is where we will find this Gundicha Marjan Lila in more detail than any other hagiography, if, if that's described at all in any other hagiography that comes to my memory. Uh, Mahaprabhu has, re has returned from his South Indian pilgrimage after two years of being absent. From Puri, you can imagine the level. Again, we have to give some context. The level of separation from the inhabitants. He just arrived there. He didn't stay that long in Puri, but he converted Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya a few more. The whole city was totally maddened with love of God, and he left. 
<laughs> and he left and he returned after two years. And there comes the conversion of, in this context will come the conversion of Prataparudra Maharaj, the king of Puri, and so on. So different devotees coming from different places, Bengal, other areas, to join Mahaprabhu, like every Chaturmasya, four months with him. And we are just getting closer and closer to to Rathiyatra per se. So Gundicha Marjan Lila is about to come. So Mahaprabhu is asking Kasi Mistra, and he calls this, how do you say, like the, the, like the temple president in the, in the area and so on. Um, they ask them and Sarvapoma Bhattacharya, who is taken as, as a senior for Mahaprabhu, please give me permission to engage in the cleansing of, of Gundicha Marjan. He's asking that one day before, like yesterday, if you will. Can I clean Gundich margin with my companions? So everyone gives uh, permission, per blessing for that. So interestingly, he starts, Mahaprabhu starts to get all the particular paraphernalia for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly, before starting the cleansing of the temple, that you may consider that's not the highest um, engagement, if you will, to clean. But Mahaprabhu started to decorate his devotees. He started to put sandalwood paste. He tried to, he started to garland all of them before passing the broom and on and, and other items. <clears throat> Seems that Brigupat is tempted to recreate a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, we have to make this more interactive. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> So somehow we will we'll try to travel. This is important to, to travel in, in time and space and try to inhabit all these narrations. So Brigupa has felt some inspiration and will extend some Utipana. So for those of you online who are wondering what's that weird noise in the background, <laughs> our three Brigupa Prabhu is grinding sandalwood to make sandalwood paste and to decorate all the sadakas. No? We'll bring some brooms now very soon also. <laughs> we'll make the, we have kept the house as dirty as possible. So after the class, let's see who learned the lesson. <laughs> and we will decorate all of you with some sandalwood paste. Even the ones online, let's see how you have in meditation received the, the decoration here. So Mahaprabhu started to decorate his associates you know, before giving them the broom, broom, you say? Yeah, the broom, the, the bucket with water and all this stuff. First he gave chandan, first he gave mala, you know, garland, sandalwood paste, and so on. You know, before turning to, to Gundicha Marjan you know, for the cleaning of Gundicha. So what's the meaning of this also, no? We will try. We will stop at certain points of the description of the lila, trying to to make sure to make sense of what's the meaning of that. So the idea of Mahaprabhu doing this is what we are, what you are about to perform. He's telling to his devotees, and this is the same thing that Sri Guru is telling to his students. You are about to clean your heart. You are about to engage in bhajan and kriya and anartha nivritti. You are to, about to embrace sadhana bhakti with the purpose of preparing your heart for bhava bhakti, prema bhakti to descend, for Vrindavan to manifest. So that's a heroic task, basically. Sometimes people like Joseph Campbell and others will speak about the hero's journey. Arjuna Siddhi also. He will speak about the beauty and messiness of the sadhaka's journey, so which is a hero, heroic one, basically. Okay, Jaho, Jai, Shriman Mahaprabhu ki Jai. Jai. Hmm? So why is Mahaprabhu decorating his devotees hmm? like Brigupad is doing at this precise moment? He's <laughs> telling to them, you, you, what you are about to do is glorious. Hmm. You are about to enter into this adventure of cleansing your heart. That requires courage. That requires integrity. That requires... So many, so much, so much dignity is in that task, mm -hmm. as messy as it can be, you know, as, as, as 
as <laughs> how to say an ups as up and down as it can be. Hmm? So he's indicating that you are about to engage in anartha nibriti, no, in cleaning your heart from all impurities, from all layers of ulterior motives. Hmm? <laughs> That's glorious. Yeah, <laughs> all of you have been properly decorated now. Mm. Sorry, we don't have time as, as he did for making like what 15 garlands in one moment. So <laughs> <laughs> we have to develop that yoga CD yet. But mentally, mentally, Rigupa is garlanding all of you. So please receive that mentally, all of you as well. So Mahaprabhu is making this point. Mm. You are about to engage in anarthani vritti. You are practicing bhakti with an awareness of the necessity of the moment, which is I cannot just aspire in a naive way to be in Golok Vrindavan in, in one weekend, but I need to deal with so many non-integrated complexity in my life that I need to learn how to integrate, to make, to, to become a, a, a whole practitioner, a balanced human being on which foundation I can develop my, as my guru will say, vertical devotional project. So what's the meaning of an art and a vritti? We have to stop there for a while to really understand the symbology of this Undicha Marja and Lila. So anartha, artha means value, basically we could say wealth or value. So anartha means to assign false value to reality, basically. That's an, an anartha makes you assign false value to something that has some, some other type of value, but you're imposing a false sense of value in the environment. And you conduct your life according to that sense of value that you are projecting, which is basically some form of prejudice. Mm -hmm. Or if we take art as purpose, also an art means a false sense of purpose that is conducting your life. And nibriti, of course, means like getting rid of, getting rid of a false sense of value. And in other words, acquiring real value, artha, Paramartha, the supreme wealth, the supreme gift. And as I like to say, to get rid of false senses of value and purpose doesn't mean like to, to engage in some form of evasive practice. No, no, this no, this is bad. This is and just take the, the carpet and pull everything behind the carpet. I'm engaging in art and everything now. Like if you will clean the house, I I hope you don't just put all the dirt below the carpet no. No. <laughs> just in case do not do not look what's going on there <laughs> maybe one dragon is there or something some arm roll down or something <laughs> but the point is someone if imagine if Brigo is caught doing that in Fraganti you say also no. and Saragai mm -hmm. say what are you doing no. and Brigo says I'm cleaning the house and she said that you're not cleaning the house you're putting all you're concentrating all the dirt in one hidden spot of the house so that remains in the house. Nobody can see it, but it's it's in the house. And it's so concentrated that even in time it may create some some monster because it's so much in one same place, who knows tumor or something, or some, whatever. <laughs> so we are not about evas evasive mechanisms, not like, oh no, I have to deal with my anarchy. Just put everything below the carpet and nobody will notice that. You put a nice picture in your social media profile and life goes on. <laughs> That's not the idea. But how to how to integrate whatever is is causing some trouble means that something that is begging for further integration. How I can use that particular energy or situation or tendency, how how I can dovetail and recenter that in connection to, to the absolute. Because if we conceive an art and ability just as getting rid of stuff no. that I don't want to see and not even working on that stuff before getting rid of that, we may just be, again, in a mood of, I want to, lead, to, to stop having this as soon as possible. But you are not lear learning anything from that. And you may be just evasive. Mm -hmm. So transcendence doesn't mean evasion. Transcendence means integration, acknowledgement, as much as we can see, acknowledging what's there in the, in the horizon, as cloudy as it may be in the present moment, no problem. If you acknowledge where you are, as my Guru Maharaj likes to say, and where you want to be, the two of them are equally important. I want to be here. This is the goal I want to attain. Okay, great, nice. 
idyllic bucolic Rajadam, <laughs> where you are now. Maybe not so bucolic. <laughs> More closer to Bukowski, more than Bukolik. <laughs> <laughs> because keep and not Brajadam, not any form of Dam, maybe yet. But I want to be in Brajadam, and I have received some knocking on the door you know, to open that you know, and, and get that grace. So we want to be human. Entering Brindavan means to 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 keep our humanity intact, and even that to 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 maximize and upgrade our humanity, to divinize humanity. So in the name of cleaning our heart, be careful of stop being human because we may be so much like in a mechanical battle to get rid of bad stuff, but you may lose your humanity in the context of that. So <laughs> Anartha Nibriti has nothing to do with that. Anartha Nibriti means preparing the ground for the divine humanism that we find in Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. to dovetail your humanity in the context of devotional culture. Mm -hmm. And Arthur Nibriti is a very sensitive engagement, very very human, actually. It should be, at least. If not, there's no Nibriti at all. You're just keeping, again, you're an artist in a more hidden way, more condensed way, so you are just making the whole sickness worse. Mm -hmm. So... As a Spaishnaps, we are, as, as I always to say, we are not so much after being devotional superheroes, but devotional human beings. No? At least to begin with, you want to be a superhero, first become a human being in the context of Bhakti. <laughs> it's not about being like totally transcendental and not, nothing is affecting me. Am I totally invulnerable? And here I am. Doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to acknowledge. Uh, our present condition, as embarrassing as that may be, without over-identifying with that, of course, we are not that, but the cloud today is there. You cannot deny the cloud. You know that the sun is beyond that and so on, but you have to do something with that cloud. So so we, have, we may have some limited experiences yet, as we say today in the morning, sometimes we need to, to be pushed to, to the limits of our to the reach of our limitations, not to get depressed or over-identified, but just to know the limits of that. So we need to acknowledge the different parts of the battlefield, if you will, physical, mental, intellect, which are the reach and limitations of that. And in the context of all of that, and despite all of that, so much grace is coming. I remember some years ago, I was in North Carolina, and, and Gopal Nandini, the wife of, Krishna Chaitanya in, in North Carolina. She works in one company that they make like giant puppets. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're called puppets because they are so great that it's not that you're moving there with your hand or anything. They are like bigger than this room. No? So it's a big, big, big project. And just happened that I was visiting them and she was performing with their group one day. So she told me if I would like to go. And we went with the devotees. But before their performance there was like a how do you say in english when when a band is playing the main band is playing but some other bands come before supporting act uh, supporting something like yeah. that okay so there was one supporting act it was a couple that were making more more basically music it was with lots of sarcasm and conscious content but with lots of sarcasm and irony irony and the name of the of the band was charming disaster <laughs> and I don't know why, but I, the main thing that I recall from the whole event was that, <laughs> because I couldn't avoid re relating that, uh, okay, that's us, as Sadakas, <laughs> uh, charming disaster. <laughs> now, we are still a disaster in one sense, at least I am speaking for myself, but charming, because there is so much grace, so much beauty that has come to our lives. And somehow we are opening, trying to accept that, and that's creating so many wonderful things in our life that we cannot deny. Still, there may be disaster, <laughs> <laughs> but you cannot deny the, the charming side of the equation. And in time, the charm will will be the bi victorious, if you will. No, no, as I like to say, no matter how much disastrous you are, the charm of Krishna, Guru, and Vaishnava will always triumph in the in the in the scale if you will no, no matter if you bring to me a play with all your anarchists put together in the most condensed form they may they may wake like 
one ton or more, <laughs> more or less look all, all, all the disaster I am. If I say, okay, let's see how much mercy Mahaprabhu has come to your door. Let's put on that the other side of the scale. Automatically, we'll go like boom. And on that tone of an artist, it like phew, disappearing, who knows where. So, so it's important to keep that in mind. You know? as, as disaster as that may be, charm is there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the real glory of all this is I'm acknowledging that. I'm not identifying with that disaster, but I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning even from those so-called enemies. My Guru Maharaj once, he was asked, uh, how will you define an Arthani Britti? And he'll say, it means put your put your enemies on the altar, he'll say. Hmm. Like if you want to see an artist as enemies, actually you, sometimes our chairs have graphically depicted them, a tigress or a mad woman and this and that, and last greed and so on. But ultimately, they are not other people who is inside of you that they are to blame and we can play the victim. Oh, this tigress is killing me so much. Poor me. I mean, you are feeding the monster. Like I like to say, if you are eating, I have close experience of this these days. <laughs> if you eat something that kills your stomach and you cannot say, oh, those, whatever, whatever, that particular preparation is killing me. Or oh, my stomach is killing me. No, the reality is you are killing your stomach by giving who knows what, what thing. So similarly, our mind is like the stomach of the subtle psychic body. So if you feed that junk food, if you will, junk thoughts, junk impressions, junk prejudice, the mind will be killing you. But actually, it's because you are killing your mind. You are feeding that with so much nonsense. So then you are like, oh, like if someone else is there, like there's some many voices took possession of you. But actually, it's just all the junk stuff. You have to take responsibility of your choice. Okay, I like junk food yet, yeah, not something like that. <laughs> so my point is, we have to take responsibility as, as long as those that things are there. We have to learn from them, even if we have to to integrate them to transcend them. We have to learn from them as well. If you want to, to see them as opponents, you have to learn from them. Like if you have to play, I don't know, a match of tennis with someone, you want to defeat that person, but somehow you, the qualities of that person will challenge you to become better. And somehow that person is helping you to become better, upgrade yourself. So anyhow, this is an art and ibriti. I'm going back for just now to Gundicha Marcha and Lila, but I just want to make clear the point. These brooms and water and buckets are all about <laughs> this particular thing. Mm -hmm. and, all, and one more thing, and Artony British, we could say, is all about creativity. Why? You have to be creative in an Artony British because an Artony British means you have to turn your worst enemy into your best friend. Mm -hmm. That's what Krishna says in the Gita. Mm -hmm. You have to turn Bandhur at Matmanastasya, Janatmai Batmanajita. So mind out of control, worst enemy. Mind under control, best friend. So imagine that's a potential. Imagine if I ask you, who is your worst enemy? And still we may f see some enemy outside of us. So we'll say, no, that guy outside of my house, he's always screaming at me and playing trumpet at 3 a.m. when I want to sleep <laughs> and all these type of things. <laughs> Some internal joke here. <laughs> and I can say, okay, now the challenge is that guy that you feel is the worst possible enemy, he has to turn into your best friend ever. So it's like, oh my gosh. Not only he has to be, you have to keep make peace, but the best friend possible. That's a challenge. <laughs> but it's not impossible. It's difficult, as I like to say, but it's not impossible. And difficult is right the middle point between easy and impossible. Those are the unwanted, undesirable ex extremes. Easy, boring, no, and impossible, discouraging, but difficult, oh wow, that's the middle point. <laughs> Sometimes we take difficulties at extreme, oh, it's difficult. So what do you want, easy? After two minutes, you are desperate asking for some difficulty because it's so boring. So we have to 
An art has the potential to become art uh, and paramartha. So it's all about creativity. How do I deal with this present so-called enemies and behave in such a way, my fr myself behave in such a way, friendly way, that they start to behave as friends as well. Mm -hmm. So that takes, again, creativity, and that takes responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, and takes also awareness of who we are, again, where we are, adhikar. The idea of adhikar is not some yard, yarding stick, you say? Yardstick. Yardstick that you go on life measuring everyone. What's your adhikar? What's your adhikar? But just, I would say, a sincere acknowledgement of where I am at present so I know how to proceed. Mm -hmm. So I don't acting above where I am, below where I am, hmm? so I can be where I am. To know where you are, to know your adhikar, that's real virtue, that's real beauty. Hmm? So that's also because say Mahaprabhu is, is decorating his devotees. Hmm? Because he's saying, you are about to engage in an art and everything, which implies you have to be realistic about yourself, where you are and how to deal with where you are and that's real beauty to have the courage and the honesty to say okay i'm here but i want to be here and i'm willing to do what i need to be from here to here oh that's real beauty so that deserves externally he's beautifying them to show okay the internal beauty of treading that path so that said mahaprabhu and his associates turn to gundicha margin you know, armed with Chandan, Mala, Broom, hmm? some, how do you say, how, how did nursing want to say? Smapanam, Mopan, Hovan? Scravanam, Mapanam, to engage in this uh, alternative Angas of Bhakti. <laughs> Another variety of Sravanam Kirtan, if you will. It's a nice compliment. That, that's what really was really happening when Sravanam Kirtan. Hmm? So to say that they go to the Gundicha margin, to the Gundicha temple and they start to to clean the whole temple different areas Mahaprabhu is distributing the areas the cleaning items and Mahaprabhu himself start to clean the temple is the, the, the sancto sanctorum as they say sometimes in Latin you know, where Jagannath Dev himself is seated he goes to the Simhasana there and he starts to clean it hmm? all the different parts hmm? to begin with with brooms. Well, first of all, first layer of cleaning. Again, all this has the parallel with inner cleaning. Mm -hmm. It's not just one layer. I'm done. You pass the broom as quick as you can. I'm done, Sir Grahi. I clean the house. No? <laughs> Hopefully, Brigupad doesn't do that. <laughs> like after half an hour, we'll say the whole house is finished or something. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And Mahaprabhu starts again, he's Acharya, he's teaching others through his example. And he said that he himself is cleaning Jagannath's Simhasana with his own cloth. No, like implying that I mean, he's not even using a broom, no, like uh, something that is his very own for a fernali, his own cloth, he's cleaning that, no? like in a very intimate way, no, like, like, like also implying this is glorious. Because if you will clean generally, you won't use your cloth. You may say, you are ruining your cloth by using it for cleaning, for dust. But Mahaprabhu is implying, but this is not, I'm not ruining my cloth. I mean, this is the real purpose of using cloth. I can use that to, to clean, you know, to, to take the dust, representing again all that's taking place inside. So there's not, externally may seem there is more dust, but external, internal means I'm getting rid of that. So they say that Mahaprabhu will clean and clean very joyfully, always chanting the name of Krishna. As we will see, that's mostly the only narrative in the whole Gundicham Arjan Lila. You, they describe what they do or what they say. It's Harinam, Harinam, over and over and over and over again. So it is said that Mahaprabhu's body and all the rest were was covered by dust. So they received this unique Abhishek, if you will, they were in and, and and they will seem seeing themselves especially beautiful. Again, the Krishna Das Kavira say he's he was especially beautiful, covered with all the dust. Like implying again, when you clean your heart, the dust starts to come, and it, and you may be covered by that, if you will, and it may be seem like oh you are so dirty. 
but actually, if that's in the context of playing your heart, it's, oh, you're especially beautiful today. Mm -hmm. On a different note, but when Krishna is returning every day from his Goshta Lila, and he's covered by the dust of Vrindavan, and, and all, all the, the chariots say, oh, he's especially beautiful at that moment. He's totally covered by dust. So here Mahaprabhu is showing another variety of that type of, of Abhishek. You know, like you are covered by dust, but everything looks beautiful. Like if you start to clean a room and the room never was never cleansed for 10 years or something, <laughs> the dirt is so much established that you feel there's no dirt. <laughs> It has become so much part of the atoms of the room. It seems like, wow, everything seems with a layer of gray, but it seems that it's natural. It's like <laughs> a part of the constitution of the room. Of course, it's, you, you move the broom a little bit, and it's like, and you say, oh, why I did that? No, no, it's a disaster. I'm a, I'm a mess. And you may think, oh, it, will, it, will, it was better before moving the broom. Everything was just yeah. like, oh, no. But of course, I will go to the chair and say, no, no, that's hypocrisy. That seemed nice, but it was just apparent situation. It was not real. Reality was dirt was everywhere, taking control of the whole room. So now you are trying to deal with that. And yeah, you are a disaster. <laughs> but at the very end of the cleansing, you will be able to appreciate, oh, there was red there, yellow there, green there. It's not ever was, everything was gray. No, everything is multicolored. You are totally gray now. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you look at yourself, oh, I'm, you are a disaster on one level, but another level you feel, ah, oh, not so much joy. You are appreciating reality as it is, different colors of reality, if you will. <laughs> so similarly, mm -hmm. Mahaprabhu will, will clean this way. Krishna Das Kaviraj will say sometimes he will cleanse with his own tears. Sometimes bucket of water was not required. Just the materials came organically through his different senses. So he will just cry in ecstasy, chanting Harinam, and that was the required water for cleaning here and there. Mm -hmm. So it is said that Mahaprabhu made a big pile of dirt mm -hmm. after cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. And he took that with again with his cloth and he threw that outside of the temple. So that's another symbology there. No? Again, you clean, you make the whole pile. What will you do now with the pile? No, it's not like, okay, let's re redistribute that in different parts of the house. Or let's take the carpet and make a hole in the ground and just put there. And put... You have to take that outside so it does not return. Mm? So the same way as sadakas, we practice and try to clean our heart from certain anarthas. We should be careful not to behave in such a way that we are inviting those in artists to return to our heart. Mm -hmm. Or well, what to speak of acquiring new in artists that can happen. Mm -hmm. In the name of bhakti, that's what Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur calls bhakti uttanartha. Mm -hmm. He says, maybe you begin the process of bhakti and you have, I don't know, lust, greed, anger, envy, whatever, on some degree, and you start practicing. You, your heart starts to get cleansed from all those things. Um, you you clean yourself so nicely that people start to feel inspired with you. And so you have to you start to have followers. You start to have fame, name. You start to have knowledge. Some money is coming as a consequence of all that. All those things you didn't have before. No. When you joined, <laughs> you didn't have fame, name, position, money, knowledge. You have other anarthas, so you got rid of those anarthas, but now some byproducts are coming as a result of bhakti, which are okay, but the problem is how you relate to them. <laughs> because you may get attached to them, and you are bringing the dirt back in a new form, which may be even a more subtle form, because it seems it seems that it's Bhakti Devi's mercy. I'm Jukta Vairagya Prabhu. <laughs> Everything can be engaged in service of Krishna, yes, but you have to know, again, Adhikar, you have to know how much capacity do you have for that. Mm -hmm. So in this way, Mahaprabhu was given this example. First of all, his pile was bigger than the rest. So he was the leader telling others what to do, but he was doing that himself better than all of them put together, basically. He was really leading by example 
And when he took the pile, he took it quite far away. So like implying, this is a permanent situation. It's not that I'm getting cleansed so I can incorporate new dirt and the process is always the same. I have I, I, Some old dirt is going out, but the new dirt is coming. And there's always some dirt, updated dirt present there or something. That That's not the idea. Hmm. So the cleanse, first layer of cleansing was there. So you can think, okay, time to rest, finish. Let's go to the Prophorathi, Atri Mahaprabhu said, no, no, no. <laughs> now let's go and clean the whole thing again. Because probably there's still dirt to find, subtle, more subtle one. And nobody complained. It's not like, oh, Mahaprabhu, <laughs> don't be neurotic. It's too much. It's nice like that. It's enough. All of them understood, no, no, this has to be crystal clear. So Jagannath feels inspired to come here and take seat permanently. So Mahaprabhu said, let's try to clean again and try to pick the most subtle, small particles of dust hmm, and, 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 and grass or even sand. I mean, Jagannath Puri is close to the beach, so it's not easy to clean a place where you are near, living near the beach. No. I remember last year I stayed in Jagannath Puri for well, how, long, how long? Like 40 days or something? And that was like two two blocks from the beach. So every single day I will leave and return. It was a mess of, 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 of how do you say? Sand mm. everywhere. And you clean, you clean that next day everywhere. No, because it's, it's, that's the nature. Of sand, no? and that's the nature of some an artist in particular. Also, okay, they are over. Let's see tomorrow. Well, let's get some here and there. Mm -hmm. So they start to clean everything again, trying to go deeper. So this is the same. On Artha Nibriti has to be performed again, not with neurosis. It's never enough, and for sure there must be so much. But just like mm -hmm. I want this to be as clean as possible. I'm trying to invite Krishna to the throne of my heart. I'm trying to make Mama Mandir, as Bhakti Nataku will say, make my heart a temple. I don't want to invite him to a dirty place. I hear him it's the best possible place. So I will, I'm happy to have the chance of cleaning again and, and becoming more sort of grahi, more a sense seeker, not trying to go more fine, fine, fine detail. So that's the dynamic with an art and hybrid. You may get rid of some gross an arta, but do not rest and think, okay, that's that's over. Maybe that's over for today. You deserve some rest, but tomorrow, maybe more subtle thing will be there, and a more subtle thing will be there, and a more subtle thing will be there till you have transcended everything. But generally, we'll go from gross to subtle. I mean, you have to un un expect that to happen. It will happen in that way. Hmm? So anyhow, they cleanse for a second time, and uh, and Mahaprabhu was very happy to see the the level of cleaning in the whole temple, to see the endeavor of their of his followers, to see how much how to say how much awareness they had in this anarthani breath. Of course, they are nitya parishad; they don't need any anarthani breath. They are just performing this, so we can derive this teaching. So I will say that anarthani vritti, it's not a practice unto itself. You do not do, not do anarthani vritti. You engage in bhajana kriya, in devotional practices. But anarthani vritti means you engage in bhakti with unawareness, unawareness of which anarthas you have to deal with, as much as you can see. Of course, we cannot see the whole constellation, the whole anarthic constellation that we have, but... <laughs> What you can see, it's important that you have to try to be aware of that and work with that and gradually advance more and more. Mm -hmm. So Anartha Nibriti will be that, but engaging in Ibhajana Kriya, mm -hmm. while I'm trying to be aware as much as I can of which Anarthas are taking place at the present moment. Raghun Das Goswami, Manashik, Charupa Goswami, Nupadrasamrit, all of them, they begin their treatises trying to make this point. Mm -hmm. Try to do that. Try to work under the shelter of the sadhu, who knows even sometimes better than us. 
what we need in many cases. Our especially knows all that we can be. So that's very important to keep the proximity to someone who knows. When we say the guru knows us better than we do, not necessarily means uh, he knows in detail all your anatos, he knows in detail what you are thinking, or but he or she knows all that you can be. And that's that's what that's enough for us. That's what he we need him to know, if you will. <laughs> he knows all that we can be, and he or she has the capacity of connecting that with that potential. <clears throat> so anyhow, after these two layers of brooming, no, brooming, no. What do you say? Broom is the Perfect. instrument. Perfect. Yeah. Brooming? Oh, sweeping. sweeping. I want to brushing, you say? Sweeping. OK, <laughs> sweeping. Mahapuru now says, now bring water. Again, another layer of, of cleaning. No, two, two layers of sweeping, now bring water. So everyone brought like hundreds of buckets filled with water. And they put them all in front of Mahaprabhu. And he started himself, you know, taking again cloth, water, you know, and just going even further detail, further detail. You know. Even the, how do you say? Ceiling. Roof? Ceiling. The ceiling, floor, Simhasana, you know. everything in the room, Mahaprabhu will like. And then at one point, they start to throw, because, yeah, you cannot reach the ceiling just that easy. So they start to, to throw water to the ceiling. So you can imagine also that created, I imagine, some type of festive dynamics as well. <laughs> some refreshing also no? because of so much cleaning and so on. And so the water was on the walls, on the ceiling, on the floor, and everyone, some self self-generated Abhishek for everyone. Like <laughs> and the water was clean, cleansing, cleansing, cleansing. So Mahaprabhu continued cleaning the, the seat of Sri Jagannath. <clears throat> <laughs> that may be too much of your recreation of, uh... <laughs> for those of you who are not here with us online there is some indication to throw here water to the ceiling but maybe the, on the online streaming may, may end up and the speaker may be electrocuted or something like that so only because of you so you can continue here we, we won't do that but mentally mentally that's going on mentally that's going on so everyone was w cleaning with water. Even some of them will go close to Mahapra when he was absorbed in, in ecstasy cleaning and they will throw some water without him noticing in, in his feet. And, and some other will like drink hmm, the Charanamrita coming from the feet of Mahapra. Hmm. So again, it's not only about getting rid of an artist, but receiving in the context of using the water that you used to clean that can transform also into divine Charanamrita as well. Hmm. So at, at one point, Krishna Daska Goswami will say, so at this point, the minds of every devotee were, were, were as clean as the rooms were clean. Mm -hmm. So making clear this parallel. You are cleaning the outside room, but actually actually this represents the inside room. So, And it, I think, applies to all of us. If you live in a dirty house, it, it speaks about your mind as well, basically. No? And, and, and you cannot just be in a totally dirty house and you... Generally speaking, at least you will be totally transcendental and undisturbed. So one thing is corresponding to the other. So this Mundicha Marjan Lil again is speaking about what Sadhana Bhakti is about. Kriti Sadhya Bhavet Sadhya Bhavasa Sadhana Sadhana Abhida Nitya Siddhasya Bhavasya Prakatyam Hridi Sadhyata, which basically means engage your senses for the pleasure of the master of the senses. So you are preparing your heart for the descent of Nitya Siddha Bhava, for the descent of the eternal feelings residing in the hearts of the Brajavasis, the inhabitants of Vrindavan. So it's not that this is a very long, maybe technical point, so I won't into the detail, won't go there, but it's not that sadhana bhakti produces prem. Prem is not something produced or created. So it's Nitya, Nitya Siddha. It's just see the Krishna prayer. Sadhya Kavunai. For more information, you can go <laughs> to that book there. <laughs> so, <laughs> subliminal promotion there. <laughs> but the point is, need to see the Krishna prayer means divine love for Krishna exists eternally in the need to see that. 
It's eternal. It's need to see that in the need to see us. No, it's eternal existent in those who are eternally perfect. So, prema is not created. Prema is just descending. What? So, what's the purpose of sadhana? To clean our chitta. Need to see the Krishna prem, sadhya kabuna, shrava nadi, suddha chitta karaya odai. So the chitta is cleansed. Mahaprabhu will give this exact same analogy. Chitta darpana marjanam. You will cleanse the mirror of your chitta. So that eventually will prepare the ground for the descent of Krishna prem. Wow. So anyhow, the devotees were singing, dancing, uh, hundreds of buckets with water were coming. Some of them were ecstatically bringing them so they will crash with one another and the buckets were made of clay so they will break. So they had more to clean <laughs> and more water to bring. Mm -hmm. And here comes the point when Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami will say, and whenever they needed something, the only thing they say was Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. But everyone will understand what they needed. If someone needed a bucket with water, they will say Krishna, Krishna. And the other one will say, Krishna, Krishna. No? So, and they understood, I need a bucket of water. And the other one will say, I'm bringing it. But they just said, Krishna, Krishna. There was no need to use any other words. They were so much, um, how to say, fine-tuned, <laughs> aligned with the sense of purpose, that there was no need to use any other words to mean anything else. And also implying the name of Krishna includes every other sound. So you can refer to anything only by the name of Krishna. Or, or, or in, an, in another words, what Mahaprabhu talked when he was a Sanskrit scholar, but already converted, he will teach every single word is first the name of Krishna and then something else. Every Sanskrit word in the alphabet, he will say, first refers to Krishna, then refers to whatever you like. But every sound first is pointing in that direction. So in other words, if you go to that sound, you can point to every single other thing if you want. So that, that was a very interesting dynamics there. Everyone was saying Krishna, Krishna, but everyone understand what actually each one was meaning. Of course, first they were meaning Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> and in a secondary layer, bring me more water, bring a bucket, clean that floor. But first of all, Krishna, Krishna. No? Like implying, if you are engaged in cleaning your heart, the first idea you have to be reminded is Krishna Krishna. <laughs> Why I'm cleaning my heart? Krishna Krishna. I need to bring an extra inner broom to clean this section. For what? Krishna Krishna. No. <laughs> I have to keep in mind what's the purpose of all this engagement. So Mahaprabhu will go also and, and besides giving the perfect example, will go and inspect how everyone else was doing their particular task. So when someone was doing that very nicely, Mahaprabhu will like, like praise that devotee and, and, and give support and, and, and share that. But when he's with someone who was doing something not in the best possible way, Mahaprabhu will chastise the person in a loving way. Please do not relate the word chastisement with something negative or traumatic. But just, and again, this is the, the parallel between guru and disciple. No? Disciple is expected to do his her homework in working with his her own heart and the guru will have to create some and my guru will say teachable moment but if the, the student is not taking advantage of that guru has the hopefully the disciple is giving the guru permission to tell me whenever i'm doing it wrong because i want to do it right i mean it's like it should be like without thinking without thinking that if, if i'm going to learn i don't know piano from a teacher it, it goes without saying that whenever I'm mistaken, the teacher will tell me. No. You shouldn't even clarify. Teacher, if I'm mistaken, please correct me. And he'll say, of course, that's the only thing I will be doing for a few years, probably. <laughs> no, so it goes without saying. If, if you say, do not tell me when I'm mistaken, the teacher will say, class is over and you don't, don't return here, please, because you will never learn anything. So, so in the same way, part of the duty of the teacher is to correct the disciple. Uh, and even he shouldn't ask for me, permission for that because having a teacher implies, I need that. I don't have a clue what's better or not. So, so Mahaprabhu will correct what someone, what someone was not doing their best. In another word, in, in connection to an art and we could say, 
that the student is engaged in an art and ability, but sometimes one may fall into some complacency corner for a moment and enter into, an, into a denial of, of growing more. Mm -hmm. I, I read recently one quote which was interesting, which is basically means like sin happens when we refuse to grow. Mm -hmm. That's a, the, the main capital sin. <laughs> because sometimes we, we, we think we have this idea of sin or evil it, it, more connected with they call sometimes the hot sins, no? like this anger and lust mm -hmm. and greed. But many times it has more to do with complacency, superficiality, hypocrisy, uh, blindness to re to acknowledge what is in your face. That's way more delicate. So in regards to an art and ability, again, it can happen in that direction. Not so much the art is taking over, but you are not doing all that you can to continue growing. As we said one time, that's a form of sahajism. One form of sahajism is I want to rush into a level that is too high for my present situation. But an inverted form of sahajism is I don't want to grow to a level that I'm already called for. And I want to remain in a comfort zone that should no longer belong to me, basically. So, so that's very important to be to test ourselves to examine ourselves, to, to allow others to examine ourselves. Like, like, like Jiva Goswami mentions in the Bhakti Sandarbha, he once, he quotes one, one verse from the Brahma by Bhartha Purana, he speaks about different types of guru. And when he speaks about one type of guru who is not the ideal one, he says that guru does not conduct any type of examination. So we would think, well, what's the purpose? What's the meaning of that? So of course, one meaning can be the guru is not examining the disciples or testing the disciples or, or, or correcting the disciples, but also on one level is uh, the guru. And with guru, we can apply that to ourselves, although we are not guru, but the point is the guru is not examining himself, for example. How much what I'm teaching others, I'm doing that. How much of what I'm telling others to do I'm doing my best to do that myself first, as Mahaprabhu is showing here. Because that can happen. You may get accustomed to telling others what to do. To be This is a hot seat, just in case. It sounds pretty fancy, but <laughs> there is a price to that. No, I, I'm, telling, I'm not telling you what to do in one sense, but in one sense, yes. <laughs> uh, but of course, Krishna is hearing all that and you know, you say all those nice things to others, Padmana Maharaj, let's see how much you, you yourself believe those words. So after I get down from this hot seat, I enter into the real hot seat, which means how do I walk my talk? And the test will come. And not always you will pass the test sometimes. You just sometimes will realize speaking too much, speaking can be too much can be a distraction. What's too much? You can you have to see how much of a distraction that is, because if that's distracts you from making your own practice a priority, that's a distraction for sure. If the priority is telling others what to do, <laughs> there you are being distracted of telling yourself what to do. So you should create some formula that okay, I'm telling ten percent of my day people what to do, and ninety percent of my day being reassuring that I'm doing what I tell others what to do, or something in that level. Not even 50 and 50, <laughs> because that's not so, so, so sustainable. Mm -hmm. So, so this is important also, no? like to examine ourselves, what we think, what we tell, what goes outside of our mouth, and how much that is rever reverberating. You have the word? Resonating. Yeah, yeah. Inside of us, resonating inside of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have very high standards, very high rigor of this, we may lose so much in our representation even of bhakti. We can be experts in telling others what to do, but not experts in in pursuing the, the realization that comes after doing what we are telling others what to do. <laughs> I may tell you this, 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 but how much I am applying myself in the practice to get anubhav. So anubhav should be priority. Anubhav means experience, direct realization, direct experience of what one speaks about. Mm -hmm. 
So again, Mahaprabhu will see some of them neglecting their principle of anarthani breathing, becoming somewhat complacent. So he will lovingly intervene and chastise them. Hmm. And then Mahaprabhu, just we are concluding here, he's sitting all his disciples on one row, on another row, and all these different piles were there, each one different size. Again, Mahaprabhu's pile was bigger than anyone else. And he said, let's see who was the one who has uh, collected the, le the least or the less? The least. And the one who had done that will receive chastisement. Okay, another chastisement. Well, will be, that person will have to pay, a, how do you say? Well, you have to pay a fine, a fine thank you, of, of like some cakes and sweet rice no? for the Vaishnavs. So that's a chastisement. No? Vaishnav Seva. So th that's again an important point. No? He's just diamond, those who were not so expert, not so skilled in Anarthani Vritti, he chastised them with Vaishnav Seva. No? Like implying, you go to the Vaishnava and serve the Vaishnava and take further shelter in the sado and, and align yourself with discipline under the shelter of that person so you <clears throat> become more skilled in this in this art. Hmm? So again, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami at this point, just concluding, will say, the minds of everyone were as clean as the temple. So creating this symbolic parallel, external cleansing, internal cleansing, as Mahaprabhu himself said again, the very beginning of Shikshastakam, the very first words of the Shikshastakam, his final instructions were, Chetudarpanam Arjanam. So now there's a parallel, Gundicha Marjan Lila, Marjanam, the word Marjanam is there, Marjanam is cleansing. So Chetudarpanam Arjanam, as I like to put it, Cheta means Chitta, and Chitta in modern terms will be translated as the subconscious, <laughs> where all these samskaras are stored and, and, and from a background layer, subconscious layer, moving us here and there. So Chetu Dharpana Marjanam basically means embrace your subconscious in contemporary terms. Because you say clean the mirror of the heart, it sounds like romantic, but what what's, does it mean? Embrace your subconscious. And you say like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not so, sometimes we are not so willing to to visit the subconscious no? because it's like the how do you say in English this I like the, the, this room in the house that you put all the outside the house you have a little room with all this stuff is put there like storage room or yeah, yeah. yeah there was another word because in, in the US they were another, well, different words but is that 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 room that whenever you don't know where to put something you will put it there <laughs> Yeah, basically that's bodega. For those who speak Spanish or if that's used here, bodega. Maduban, that's a word, no? bodega. That's in Spanish. No? So whenever you don't want to see anywhere, throw in the bodega. 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 But at, at some point, the bodega starts to have a life of its own. <laughs> you have put so many stuff and nobody had looked there for years. They, they throw this on, out of the window. But sometimes you will start to hear voices from the bodega, some arm hands coming from the window of the bodega, and you say, I won't enter there. But the bodega is full. You cannot put, let's open another bodega then. <laughs> and you have another a whole community of, of these voices and arms, and you're like, I don't want to go there. <laughs> so that's kind of the, to, be, to be a little graphical. Embrace your subconscious, open the bodega, clean the bodega, no problem. You open and, and the monster is no longer there. <clears throat> it doesn't sound too glorious, but that's the first glory of Sri Nam that Mahaprabhu is mentioning. That first verse, there are seven glories of the Nam. The first is clean the bodega. <laughs> I said, like, oh, it doesn't sound so glorious. Mahaprabhu said, that's glorious. Remember, I garlanded you. I put this chandan. You will be protected by me. Enter the bodega. You are backed, supported by Mahaprabhu and his Gaur Bhakta Vinda. Hmm. So in this way, this Gundicha <laughs> represents, again, Vrindavan. So Gundicha Marjan Lila, this pastime of the cleansing of Gundicha means let's clean our heart hmm, more and more. So Bhagavan eventually feels called, invited, tempted, and resistively. The all attractive feels all attracted 
to go in that direction and he decides to sit there forever. Mm -hmm. Paramatma will be very respectfully kicked out and <laughs> our is that they will be fully enthroned there. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we are we are celebrating today, Gundicha March and Lila, and and just few words to connect with tomorrow's celebration. And, and we will stop there because Chaitanya Charitamrita describes after this Gundicha March and Lila came one celebration called Netrot Sabha, which is also happening today. Netrot Sabha means like a festival for the Netra, for the Aix, which is means that Jagannath is giving darshan again after being two weeks uh, sick after the Snan Yatra when he is bathed. And it is said that he cocks, cock, how is, catches a cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he has to go into his inner rooms. He's not given darshan for two weeks. And the whole 56 times of eating changes. Mm -hmm. And they start to serve him herbal teas and things like this because he's sick mm -hmm. <laughs> for two weeks. That's the diet, interestingly. So then next day, like a day like today, he's given darshan again. So that's the Trotsa, the festival for the eyes to, to have darshan of him. And it is said that <clears throat> tomorrow, Rathi Atra, I mean, Jagannath has a pretty very powerful digestive fire because for two weeks he was taking just herbal teas. Today is normal standard of preparations, but tomorrow Rathiatra they will cook double as usual. So he in two days is ready to eat <laughs> hundreds of times per day after being just herbal tea for two weeks. So only the Supreme can do. That's why Krishna said, I'm the fire of digestion. No? <laughs> we can <could>, we <laughs> connect it. <laughs> So in this way, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami concludes his narration, saying that whoever, even if a topmost sinner, he's about this Gundicha Marjan Lila, and that person will be able to obtain devotion for Krishna, Krishna Bhakti. And so that's our hope, and that's why we are actually speaking about this you know, with that particular focus in mind. And in this way, preparing ourselves, our consciousness, and our hearts for tomorrow, Rathi Yatra, because again, if you want Rathi Yatra to actually happen, first you have to do Gundicha Marjanam. If there is no Gundicha Marjanam, there is no Rathi Yatra as much as you can. You have to go through all that Rathi all that Gundicha Marjanam Lila implies, and the real celebration of Rathi Yatra will take place. So in this way, all this is actually a preliminary preparation for tomorrow. So see you tomorrow in our archipelago Rathi Yatra will be somewhat aquatic version of it. <laughs> so see you in Sri Chaitanya Dam. And we will be speaking about that tomorrow in the same time. So before finishing, I don't know if there are any questions and commentaries, some, something you may like to say. Oh, Bhaktiras is clarifying the word I was looking was shed. The bodega? Shed in English? Shed. Yeah. She knows because I, I've repeated that in, in North Carolina so many times. I just wanted to comment that uh, um, <clears throat> we celebrated the Gundicha Marjana here in Sharbuj Temple today. Uh, Sargrai was vacuuming. Uh, Haricharan was polishing the, the puja things. Onkar was cleaning the books here. Yes, Onkar was cleaning the books. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to do that function as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And and uh, Shamananda cleaned in the in the kitchen, and Nora has also vacuumed. Yeah. And you, bring up, but also I saw you cleaning the the doors and yeah, some other yeah. sections. Yeah. So we we tried to kind of enter yeah. into the spirit like yeah, this for sure. Thanks so much for preparing the the ground to that. Hope you did the same over there in your respective places. So, nothing else before finishing, Omkar? Maharaj, I was wondering when you mentioned you read the Lila yesterday. You read the Lila yesterday? Yeah. Uh -huh. Or today? Today in the morning. Yeah, this morning. But I don't remember you re as reading what you mentioned about each one had a pile and whose pile was the smallest. He, uh, yeah, he said. Yeah. Chastised. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not really like a chastisement, isn't it a nice, I mean, it's counterintuitive to be rewarded something that we are supposed to be aspiring for as the highest. I didn't get the last part. Like we're aspiring for Seva and that's uh -huh. supposed to be the highest thing. So to be able to serve Vaishnavas is supposed to be a reward and not a chastisement instead. So can we see that as Mahaprabhu's compassion 
Yeah, that's Mahaprabhu's chastisement, basically. That's I yeah. mean, when he chastises, he con he keeps giving mercy. So mm -hmm. just, that's the way he's doing that. And and that's how we should see that everything everywhere. You no, know, like if that's coming from higher quarters, Sula Prabhupada will say. No, I mean, and there's one saying that he says that how would say that varsana hai kripar lakshan. Yeah, tada varsana hai kripar lakshan. Chastisement is a sign of mercy. Hmm? Uh, so, of course, again, if it comes from not just to justify abuse or anything like that, but if a real well wisher, guardian, Bhagavan, Guru, Sadhu, they're chastising us, it's coming from a place of unconditional love and costless grace. So, it's a way of saying chastisement. It's just, it's on top of chastisement, it's mercy, but it may take the form of chastisement or correction if you want to put it like that because again we yeah we may attach some meaning to each word according to our uh, experience outside of the realm of unconditional love and chastisement is not like mm. it's just for the sake of i don't know making others suffering but even in ideally in this world i don't know if a parent chastises the children ideally should be trying to help the person it's not just for the sake of making the person suffering if we speak about karma you want to see that as chastisement hopefully not you will see that divine justice educational law so and that's that's karma we are not speaking about costless mercy <laughs> but even karma is there is some educational purpose so if we speak about mahaprabhu nityananda prabhu and so on if it takes the form of chastisement you see all the sections when i don't know nityananda is kicking shivananda saying or things like this and oh that's over chastisement, but you would understand it's like dancing like 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 nothing, not celebrating that. So <clears throat> Prabhupada will say if the guru is caressing the disciple or slapping the disciple, in both cases he's giving mercy. Again, externally we may say, Oh, chastisement, oh mercy, no, mercy, mercy. And this is greater mercy, he will say. Not because we are masochists or anything, but he will say, you only chastise someone that you have some intimate connection with. You are not chastising everywhere in the street, or hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> On a normal case, you will only chastise someone that you really are close. So the chastisement will come as a sign of trust and intimacy. Mm -hmm. So Srila Siddha Maharaj one will say that. Um, Srila Prabhupada himself once also Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta chastised um, um, Srila Prabhupada publicly once. And Srila Prabhupada felt so much love by his Guru Dev. He, 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 he's so concerned about me. He takes that he's chastising me in front of everyone. So I, could, I could relate to that, <laughs> interestingly. That, that that's a good way of seeing this situation because you can take the other stand. Why he's saying that to me in front of all of them? Couldn't he say that just publicly, uh, privately? No, he's so concerned about me that he wants everyone else to be aware of my issues. So I'm not only protected by him, but by so many others. Or something. <laughs> and Srila Maras will say something similar. Oh, Guru Dev chastised me. Oh, it seems that he considers myself his property. I'm saved. He concludes. He concluded. Because again, he took the he you want to chastise everyone and everyone. You only chastise someone that you are close to. So if Guru is chastising me, he considers me close to him, his property. I'm safe. If he considers me his property, I'm saved. So he ended up celebrating that. <laughs> so in this case, we could say the same. Mahaprabhu is chastising, quote unquote. But the form that it takes is serve the Vaishnavs. So, like pointing, whatever chastisement comes from the higher re regions, that should take the form of increasing our disposition for Vaishnav Seva, basically, because it's coming from there. It's coming from someone with a disposition for Vaishnav Seva. So, it should come to us inviting to increase our disposition for Vaishnav Seva. In that case, both sides properly understood what's going on. So. So yes, strictly speaking, in one sense, there's no chastisement in the sense of that's mercy. So again, in the beginning, we, we see these two words as opposite, but 
in the absolute plane, there is no difference. Something else? Okay, we can conclude here. Maybe we can do some five, ten minutes bhajan to some maha mantra to conclude, and then we honor Prasad and continue sharing. So, Sri La Guru Dev Ki Jai, yeah. Sri Man Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, yeah. Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, yeah. Sri Sadhguru Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, yeah. Sri Dundi Chamarjan Leela Ki Jai, yeah. Sri Ratri Yatra Ki Jai, yeah. Gaur Bhakta Vrind Ki Jai, yeah. Gaur Primanan Ki yeah. Jai. Panchakal Pataru Vyasa Kripasan Dukhe Vachapati Dhanam Pavanifya Vaishnavivya Namona Mahananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai Vodhari